Hello, my name is Stephen. Welcome to High Finder Tech Talks, where we understand the technology that makes the hydrogen economy work. Today, I am particularly pleased to welcome somebody who has a really strong background in electronics, automation. He runs a company that builds entire manufacturing facilities. And if you are in the hydrogen and um, fuel cell space in Europe, he, for me, he's actually turned to be a bit of a legend in that area. He's been in it for a while. I am particularly pleased to welcome Fabian, Fabian Kapp from Grebena. Hello, Stephen. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me. I'm pleased to be here. Thank you, Fabian. It's great to have you. And actually, today we have a big program because I know you build entire manufacturing facilities for bipolar plates. So we today, do. I'd like you to take us on a journey on how one can manufacture bipolar plates in a, yeah, in a, in, in a, in a, in a high-quality, efficient way. Yes. Indeed. Can you do that? Indeed, that is what we do. We provide manufacturing technology for the production of metallic bipolar plates. Mm -hmm. And also I brought some samples for you today oh, yeah. so that we really can go through all detailed processes, what you need and what you need to do for the manufacturing process. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Great. So if we would have a look for the production line yeah. at all, or more or less the concept, what steps you need to do in the production line, First of all, you start um, with the decoiling system. Mm -hmm. yes, you have the material, the, the metal um, sheet, the coil. So these are, these are all the steps that one right. needs to go through. Uh, and in the end, you get a bipolar plate, which you can then stack. Right. You go from the coil, yeah. then you really go through the forming process. Yeah. You need to do somehow a cleaning, yes. uh, a separation. That yeah. means you need to cut out the plate from the formed um, coil. Then you need to do a final cutting. That yeah. means the final shape. Yeah. Then you need to put the anode and cathode plate together. Yeah. Then you need to go through, a, most of the time, a special straightening process yes. that you have yeah. in a really flat plate. Yeah. Then at the end, it should be done in a second cleaning. Another cleaning. Yes. Okay. And then the leak testing, very important, yeah. that you are safe um, and you have a bipolar plate, which is okay. Yeah. Then a following application is the sealing. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go into the stacking process where you assemble the bipolar blade, the MEA, bipolar blade, etc., yeah. and you get a stack. Okay. So everything what is blue here is something yeah. what we can provide. Mm -hmm. um, sealing, stacking as something specialized, uh, that's not in our scope. Mm -hmm. And also leak testing that we have partners for, but I'd like to go with you more detail to all the processes. Okay, let's go, let's go. So from the coil to the bipolar plate. Right, yeah. So before, or we go from the coil and then we go really here into ah. a possible layout. So uh, this is a possible layout. Yes, so, right. Yeah. So the, the layout is really depending on the customer. Yeah. yeah it depends yeah how the floor shop looks like etc mm -hmm. and if you have a look for it here yeah. it is more or less what we showed before yeah. so you start here from the coiling system if I can just ask sure. that, so we see two times the same so this is actually I see the this is these are these are this is the this is a box over the the robots and so right. we have two times the same line here yes this correct yeah yeah this depends on the production capacity yes. how many plates you like to produce and yeah. also a special system behind you do not need to have two lines okay. but in that case you, you've designed straight away for double output yeah <laughs> double output because it Customer wants to get more plates, okay. and then for sure uh, you need to have some safety in the production line, yes. especially you have your laser processes, uh -huh. so high-risk processes, yes. you need to have an, um, housing, yes. and if we would show only the white box here, that's not interesting, okay, and cool. so we make it here visible that you Perfect. can see, okay, what is in that uh, white box. Okay, so top left corner was coiling. Right, right. so coils, you coils. go from the coil through the forming machine, mm -hmm. and in the forming machine, uh, we go into the, the, the really detailed machine itself. Mm -hmm. We um, use water pressure. Yeah. We use the so-called hydroforming process uh -huh. so that we can do the forming. And as you can see here in the example, yes. um, hopefully, yeah, you can see it, great. Yes. You see here, so this, this is the strip coming from the coil ah, so into this, the machine. This, this is, is really all the coil which is ah. uh, fed into the machine. Yes, yes. And then we close the machine and then we use the water pressure to do the forming here in that blade. So, luckily, our customer, Stack Hydrogen, mm -hmm. um, uh, allowed us to show the plate here today. Thank you, guys. So thank, thank you, you very much uh, for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> and um, so, you see, this is the first step. Mm -hmm. It is important to know, you see here, a lot of material left around the plate. Yes. Obviously. This is not usual. Mm -hmm. This is because it is an old design, a couple of years old. And mm -hmm. so, nowadays, there's uh, only a small... Um, area around the plate that yeah. you don't waste material through okay. the forming process. Yeah. Okay. But so you can imagine what is the first step forming and how it looks like if you go uh, through the forming machine. Okay. And then uh, the, the machine pressurizes 
water on one side to create that yes. form, basically. Correct, okay. So, and and what, what kind of pressures are we talking about here? We can go up to 4,000 bars, oh. but in general, um, we go up to 2,500 bars, something like this. Okay. That's normally enough for um, the, and the you designs. Use, you we use have. water. It is water. There is mm -hmm. an, an additive in the water. It's mm -hmm. only um, that the, the valves are protected, but mm -hmm. at the end, it is normal water. Okay, interesting. Wow. Yeah, so fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a very, two, very two thousand one hundred bar. Okay, it's a very fascinating process. Uh, okay. uh, especially, you are very flexible in the process. You don't need to care, take care about the material thickness. You can yeah. put different material thicknesses in it. Uh, you have low tooling costs. It's Trade to use that kind of process mm -hmm. um, to have a very high quality form plate at the end. All right, okay. So, so after the forming, yes. as you can see here in the production line, um, we had been here in the forming machine. Yes. Then we go through a cleaning station. Mm -hmm. And after the cleaning, we go into the separation. So the separation is if we take this plate again, yeah. separation means that you get this single piece here. Yeah. Ah, so it because, gets cut. So yeah, from, from end to end, cut, cut here cut. only yeah. on that side because. Yeah. If you're going through the forming machine, as yeah. you are at the coil, yeah. uh, it would be a very long uh, blade and you can't use it in the following okay. And when you mean steps. cleaning, is this just some brush going over it or is it water? Or no, it's, an, it's, a specialized, it's a specialized process here mm -hmm. in the machine. Um, so it's like an, a vapor cleaning okay. um, so that you don't have any um, effect on the, on the coating yeah. of the blade, mm -hmm. uh, that you have really a good, um, fine surface okay, after cool. the process. So after you have done the separation, then yeah. you see here you're going in that area where you use where we are using laser technology. Mm -hmm. We are using laser technology for the cutting and the welding. Mm -hmm. um, and ah, okay, what means cutting? Cutting means um, so before we go into the machine, we have that part. Yes, and then we go into the cutting machine, and then you get a part like this. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is now, as you can see, uh, more or less the final half plate. So um, either way you have the anode plate or the cathode plate, that you really have uh, the final shape, which is then um, good to use for the next steps. Mm -hmm. So th this, th this gets cut out with lasers? Yes, basically. right. Okay. And mm -hmm. it's very critical. May, maybe you see here the very thin, small holes here yes, in that yes, area. Yes, I actually do that. And this yeah. is why we are using the laser technology, because mm -hmm. they need to have a very high accuracy. Yes. The, the, the edge of the holes, they need to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no burr left or something yeah, like this, because yeah, yeah. this is a very critical area also around the areas here, because these are the ports for the, the hydrogen, the air, the water for cooling, etc. Yes, and yes. so they need to have a really high edge quality. Yes, yes, and yes. So as you can see here also in the process, sometimes you have uh, designs like this, where yeah. you can see it is not even a flat hole, yeah, it's, it's really like in 3D shape, and yeah, that's very yeah. complicated. And how, how do you do this? You, you laser. So, yeah. so basically it's you use before. the hydroforming and then you just cut off that Right. Ah, it's right. formed before and then we use the laser, so the laser is really a very flexible process. Oh, right. Wonderful. So, Wonderful. Um, and when you laser, when you cut, it just falls off that part or you need to get it? Yeah, the, yeah. the small parts, this is a special process like you can yeah. see here. Yeah. Um, this is a process where we are using um, nitrogen yeah. in the cutting process and the nitrogen um, um, yeah, is... Uh, is responsible for having a very good um, edge quality mm -hmm. and it blows also the material out. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. So Wonderful. that's then uh, okay. good for the next process Perfect. step. So the next step, um, as you can see here, this was now the cutting station. Yes. Um, then we would go into the welding station. Okay. Welding station means also you need to have two plates, right? Yes, yes, because yes, you exactly. like to weld something. Yes. And this means, for example, you have here now two plates, mm -hmm. so the anode and the cathode plate. Mm -hmm. And what needs to be done, you need to take the two plates and you need to put the two plates, I try it here, yeah. um, maybe that way, put it together like this, yeah. on and then the on top of each other, Yes. and then you need to do the welding. welding. As you can see here now, mm -hmm. yeah, it is very critical. So, um, without having a special machine, a special clamping, fixing technology, yeah. you can't do the welding. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Yeah, and this is a very Just critical... Well, this, this way, so, okay, so we see the two plates that get to be put together. Right. Where, where, where do they get welded? At the, at the edges or...? Really, this is, this is defined by the customer, mm -hmm. so um, 
every bipolar blade has a weld seam around the blade yes. and around the ports mm -hmm. because they need to be um, leak tight. Mm -hmm. um, some customers, they have also stitch welds here in the flow field uh -huh. to have a better contact resistance, to yeah. have it more stable. But this is really depending on the customer, how they make their design. Okay, understood, understood. So, and if we then have a look for the process for the welding, we need to look where we are. Mm -hmm. ah. okay, so good. Yeah, get that back and then... Uh, 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 yeah, there we nope. go. Nope. That way. One more. Right. Yeah. So, and this is what I tried to explain. You see here the small gap yeah. between the blade, and this needs to be as small as possible. Oh, understood. Because what you do with the laser, the laser um, will melt up this area here mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. bring the two materials together. Okay. And so this is why the laser welding process is the most critical process in the production line. Um, it is not only about that you know how you need to adjust the laser, so how much power you need to use for the laser. It's mm -hmm. really um, a big part of the knowledge, how you will do the fixation, how you will do the clamping, that you have a really good, um, yeah, more or less situation for the welding process itself. Okay. And also the quality of the forming is also very important for the process that you get a stable welding process. At okay, the end. understood. Right. Um, if we go then the next step, you see we are coming out here of the welding machine. Mm -hmm. um, we have a so-called straightening machine. Straightening. Yeah, this is really a special technology developed uh, in our company. Mm -hmm. um, what we see in a lot of designs, I like to put it that way. Hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah we can see that. You yeah. see it, uh, that it's like a, yeah, yeah, a warp see. blade. Yeah. yeah. So if you put it on the table, it is really ah okay. So like so, the, so it's a bit a bit. So if we can hold it here, it's actually it's slightly curved. In yeah, the, in right. That sense it's curved. Yeah. Okay. So we can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as as you yeah, may can, can that, imagine, can see the curvature there. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. very critical if you like to do the stacking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. put um, curved bipolar blades on top of each other, yeah. and you don't get a straight stack. You get a banana. Yeah. And <laughs> I guess that's not what our customer mm, likes to get at the end. Not really. Mm. Um, and so. Mm -hmm. I can see you can even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to make that small and then normally that does come back. Yeah, there we go. Okay, mm -hmm. so here you can see it again. Mm -hmm. And the process we developed, the mm -hmm. result will be at the end, most of the time, a real flat blade. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, it is really uh, flat. Ah, okay, so I can hold this one yeah. next to it. Okay. Ah, yeah, we can see it on the picture. Yeah. Yeah, a, ah, yeah I can, okay. can see the one yeah. is. Uh, ah, right, yeah, there we right. see. Okay, so the one is. More curved. And, and, okay, and what is it that you do? Pull it straight? <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk about it. Ah, we are filing for the patent right now. Ah, Everybody so. is asking. Okay. Um, so it is a process which is not that complicated, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, we figured it out over the last years because we are in the business since 20 years. Uh -huh, so we have yeah, a lot of experience. What I'm saying. We yeah. know a lot of problems from our customers. And so we are always looking for what we can improve in the process, yes. which makes our customers more happy. And yeah. This is one process. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully we will have a patent soon that we can talk also about the technology behind it. Okay, well, I would say the good news here is that, you know, whenever you have these kind of advances, usually that helps boost an entire, let me say, industry in yeah. some way, form or manner. Now somebody invents the wheel and then, um, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully. So, so congrats on that. Yeah. But okay, so now we have a straight plate. Right. Um, now you have the straight blade. Yep. And then we go again into a cleaning process mm -hmm. uh, because it could be that you have from the, the welding process some, some sparks, something left on the blade, um, some dust, etc. so that you then have a final clean blade. Mm -hmm. And then you go into a leak test system. Mm -hmm. A leak test system is not done on our own. There are a lot of specialized company in the market. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. that uh, we say, helium, okay, sometimes and so on. Yeah. yeah. We can do the integration, yeah. but we are not responsible for the process itself yeah. because you need to have also a lot of knowledge for the ceiling. Can I ask you one thing again about the cleaning? Sorry to step back, but um, so again, there may be some residues. Just only very short cleaning. How, how do you clean? You just blow a it's, gas over it again? Or it's what? the same process like before. It's a vapor cleaning. Where you really get vapor very clean. good vapor. 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 Okay. Vapor. Ah, okay. Okay. So okay, you blow kind of steam or, or steam. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, that was what I was just uh, hanging there. But, ah, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. No, okay, that's cool. fine. Mm -hmm. ah, that's working very well. And then in the leak test system, uh, you will ensure that your plate is tight yeah. at the end because. Uh, the critical process, as I said, is the welding. Yes. So it may be, especially if you have 
Um, like you can maybe see it here in the camera. Um, there are, mm. ah, it's difficult to see here, a lot of stitch worlds in the flow field. Uh -huh. And this is very critical because every world could be a potential failure in the blade. Mm -hmm. And so you need to make ensure with the leak test, so you will, um, there are two types. You can do a pressure drop leak test. So yeah. you um, blow up uh, the different areas with air. And yes. then you are looking over a short period of time if the air will be uh, stable, yes. constant at the air pressure. Or you will do a helium detection. This is then more sensitive yeah. um, to figure out if everything is okay and you don't have any leakage. So just for understanding, what you are testing is the, the, the tightness between the two plates, basically. No, no, not no. the two plates. No. Um, between the two half plates. Ah, yeah, so okay. you have yeah. the welded mm -hmm. plates here, and between the two plates, there's more ah, or less. These are already yeah, two half plates. These ah, are two welded is, plates. Okay. I, I, was, I was coming from here. This is one plate. So this is one plate. So okay, from the so. forming process, we don't have any issues. There ah. will be no hole or something yeah, in the yeah, plate. Yeah, but from the welding. Um, because between the plates, there's a cooling channel. Yes, there's several channels. No? Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and mm. this is why uh, how you can bring in then also the pressure between it or okay. do the helium detection so that you really have a look for it and see that it is uh, tight at the end. And what do you do when you discover it's not? Then we will take it out of the process yeah. and then we try to figure out where it is yeah. that we can have a look for the production process to figure out if the laser is not okay, if the oh. clamping system is not okay. okay. Um, but you can't repair the plate. Oh, you it's can. really okay. strapped. Then it's, oh, you need okay. to take it out. There's yeah. no repair welding or something possible. Okay. okay. And after that last process, this is not anymore here in the in the um, in the layout, mm -hmm. but then uh, the final step on a bipolar plate itself is then um, the ceiling. The ceiling. Which so is as that? you can see here, the blue line. Yes. This is the ceiling. Also here at that point, uh, big thanks to the Center for Fuel Cell Technology (CEPT) in Duisburg. Ah. They provided the plate with Thank the ceiling guys. on it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> uh, to really show um, how. Also accurate, it needs to be. Yeah. yeah. Ah, the you, you see. And what is what is what kind of ceiling is this? Is this some some polymer poured in there? Well, or? I'm not a specialist for okay. the for the ceiling itself. Yeah. Um, the only thing what we need is um, before the design is finalized, mm. we also need to discuss where the ceiling really will move along the blade because this is also critical. As you if you take the the blade here on the side. Yeah. As you can see here, these are critical areas for the forming yeah. you know, where we need to have a look for. And so this is important for us, but the material, what will be used for the ceiling, this is then not in our scope. Okay. So that means at this point, then we now have um, a, a bipolar plate with, seal, with a seal on it that is ready for stacking. Right. Okay. Now then, the next step would be the bipolar plate with the ceiling, the MEA, okay. etc. And then you do your stack. stack. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, that, that was cool, but just two or three questions. Sure. Um, so we mentioned if there's, during the leak test, uh, we see that there is a leakage, then this is a scrap. Oh. Um, at least, you know, we go back and start looking for the error. So I guess that's one of those inefficiencies you want to take out of the process. Can you right. tell us what are, where, where, where are places you're looking at, you know, in terms of optimizing this? I mean, we all know that the, if when the costs go down, things will be easier, let me say. Right. Uh, so efficiency obviously is part of what's driving this. Yeah. Can you tell us where are those spots that you can you know, really get so, your efficiency out from and you will get your cost down? Sure. Um, it is not only the, uh, the leak test that the blade needs to be tied. It is yeah. also that the surface is okay, that you don't have any dense uh, mix or something else yeah. on the blade. So there needs to be an um, opti optical inspection for the blade. Yeah. Uh, it could be before the forming or also after the forming that mm -hmm. you are sure that you have a good surface and mm -hmm. again, no dents or something on the on the coating maybe yeah. if it's pre-coated material like this. Um, this means um, for sure if you have here some failures in the coil, in the base material, this okay. is also an inefficiency because you need okay. to take this part through the machine without doing any forming, etc. Mm -hmm. Very complicated in the handling, mm -hmm. so this is really important. Um, but the most important step is really the welding. Okay. So during the welding, you need to have a look for the welding parameters. There are some different technology or possibilities how you can have a look for the, the data from the welding. Yeah. So maybe additional sensors which will uh, do a detection of possible um, failures yes, because yes, of yes. a signal, what you can then 
um, analyzed, or also you can use an system where you have a look directly into the welding um, okay. process itself. Um, so, so different opportunities. Th okay, so different, essentially uh, welding and, and having good base material. Very last question, um, how many people do you need to run this? How many people are standing here? You know, obviously yeah. we don't see them here. At least, normally, two people could run the line. Could so we have one, one person who's looking here for the forming yeah. area, yeah. and one person is looking for the cutting welding area. Yeah and also the leak test area, but this is um, normally running also on their own. Um, it is not important for running the production line, it is more important how many people you need to do the service, the okay. inspection, ah. the cleaning, okay. etc. Yeah, okay. You need to have Keep a look for the, for the tool, that it is clean, you need to have a look for the ceilings, also here in the leak test device, that the ceilings are okay to do the testing, etc. Mm -hmm. And so, um, to have a good efficiency in the production line, you need to have a look for the so-called OEE, mm -hmm. the overall efficiency, uh, efficiency equipment, um, where you figure out how long is your downtime. Uh -huh. yeah. And okay. this is then a very big number where you need to look for. Okay. And in terms of downtime, this can run 24 hours or uh, what it, is it, usual? It could be, it could be but okay. uh, running 24 hours is not possible because you need to do some maintenance in between okay. from time to time. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Wow, okay, there we go. I think this was super interesting. Thank you uh, for taking us so quickly through these stations. I think we've learned yeah. quite a lot. <laughs> Thank you also for bringing all these samples. And uh, yeah, um, I hope you have enjoyed what uh, Fabian has shown us here. I've certainly learned a lot. See how these bipolar plates are made. If you like this video, please uh, drop us a line or subscribe and just give us some good words. We have uh, the High Finder platform where you can know more about this, get into contact with people like Fabian and find other components all related to the hydrogen economy. We are really working hard to make this useful for you. And thank you for watching this video. Please watch another one because we hope this brings us all further. Thank you, Fabian. Thank you, Stephen. Have a wonderful day.